are picking up the others. Where's my father? I put him in a kayak. Oh. Head for the village. like an angel of mercy. You know what I can't figure out is, is what was going on on board that boat. What happened to Dunn and, and why? Why was that poison gas loose in the cabin? You get out of those wet things and get some sleep before you take pneumonia. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I used to go swimming with icebergs every morning before a reveille. Yeah, he's a tough guy. Nothing ever happens to him. Hey. What's on here? Oh. Is he all right? Yeah, just plumb exhausted. Need some sleep. Well, see to it that you get some yourself. Yes, miss. I'll, I'll go check on Dad again. Yes, miss. You walk long time, come back same place. <laughs> That's gone again, Chief. 
We're starting out again in the morning with a new outfit. All we want now is some grub and a place to sleep. More white men come. You go see. Look, all we want. What did you say? More white men come from Iceberg. In house. There. Do you think it could be? It's impossible. Lady. Lady. White lady come. Fly in air like bird. Eskimo go in kayak. Oh, never mind. Never mind all that. Show us where they are. I show. You talk about old thing about all. Glad to see you got off the rack, Bosun. I thought I picked up everybody that was alive. How did you do it? It's a long, cold story, Captain. Who's that? Jim Hudson. Anybody else get off with you? Yeah, Dr. Miller. He's in the cabin next door with his daughter. Who? His daughter. She came by on a plane and picked us up off the berg. You want to speak to him? No, let it go until morning. You'd better get some sleep. Aye, sir. Where do I sleep, Chief? I'd like to get some shut eye. If we had not lost Dr. Miller's notes, it would have been different. But now that we found him alive, he must be kept alive. And the others? We will have to dispose of them. It is tasteful but necessary. What are you so touchy about? That's my department, ain't it? What's worrying me is this time it won't seem so accidental. We must impress the Chief with the fact that his tribe will be blamed. If the white authorities ever find out. Well, then better get to work. Well, just a moment, Captain. Trust me, disguise. Forget it. They'll all be dead by morning, except Doc, and we're taking him with us. You said that once before, and they're still alive. It's better if they continue to think that I'm dead. You masterminds sure ain't taking any chances, are you? Sit down. I'll fix you up. <laughs> Sleep, Captain. I've been worrying about how we're all going to get out of here. Figure we might as well talk it over now. Sure, sure. A couple of things bothering me about you. How do you mean that? Just how much you know about Jim Hudson and Doc Miller? <laughs> A couple of nice guys, as far as I know. What are you getting at, Captain? This. They're murderers. They killed Dan and tossed his body overboard. Are you sure? I'm telling you, ain't I? They're a bunch of criminals, and I'm saying to it that they're brought to justice. What I want to know is, whose side are you on? <laughs> I only have one choice. That's the side of law and order. Now you're talking, Buckham. What are your plans? Well, I'll handle the doctor. He'll take care of the girl. Who are you? Oh, he's just one of the boys. Oh. Left badly burned down in the engine room. Now, can you handle Jim Hudson yourself? Oh, sure, sure. Well... Now, this is what you do. He's a desperate criminal. And if things go wrong, and he puts up a fight... Oh. What's the idea? Tell me one thing and tell me the truth. What do you know about the Dunn murder? Murder? Dunn? Well, I don't know anything about it, and you know it. Captain Greeter arrived a little while ago with one of the crew. They say that you and the doc are criminals. We've been through a lot together, and I have my doubts. Why should Greeter want to accuse us? Does that have anything to do with a box about that high and that long with the doc's name on it? The Paratron. What? Never mind now. Where's Greeter? He's in his hut. He's going to grab the doc as soon as I tell him I put you away. This will take care of him. Better 
tie him up. Paratron, all right. Hey, what is that thing? It's a secret invention of Dr. Miller's. You don't know it, Bosun, but you did your country a great service when you didn't slip my throat. <laughs> I figured you were the right kind of a guy. And I figured that skunk on the floor there was not but law and order. Keep an eye on it. Oh, well. Hey, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? No. Nope. I'm warmed up now. Yeah, no fooling. Say, where did you learn all those fancy tricks? Huh? Oh, from the commando. The commandos, huh? Yeah, you know, the way I figured, some higher ups tipped Greeter off over that shortwave radio about the Paratron after we came on board and they were trying to get rid of us. It's in perfect condition. And you think Greeter and his men are in the pay of someone higher up? I'm sure of it. Well, what do you intend doing with the prisoners? Oh, the chief will keep them here till I can send the marshal up from Bankhead to bring them in. I'd give a great deal to know who the ringleaders are. So would I. We'll find out, though. We won't stop till we do. Well, how will you arrange for us to leave here? Oh, the boatswain now go by dog sled. You and the doctor can take the paratron with you on the plane. Now, we'll meet in Bankhead, and I'll arrange transportation from there. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to get an early start, so we better get some sleep. That's a bright idea, Jim. Good night, Jim. Good night. Come along, honey. That's right. Gunsight mine. Gunsight mine, Bill Hudson speaking. Hiya, Pop. This is Jim. I'm at Bankhead. Oh, I might have known they couldn't drown you, Jim. Gee, it's good to hear you. Is Doc Miller all right? When are you going to get up here? Doc Miller and Ruth are right here with me, and we're coming up as soon as we can get transportation. Well, why don't you call Brock? He can fix anything. I'll call Brock right away. Goodbye, Pop. Be seeing you. Get me Mr. Brock in Saskatch. That's right. Oh, Mr. Jim Hudson is on long distance. Do you wish to speak to me, Mr. Brock? Jim Hudson, you bet I do. Hello? Jim, my boy, well, this is a surprise. It's great to know you're still alive after that tragic shipwreck. Is anyone else saved? Oh, yes. Dr. Miller, the ship's captain, three members of the crew. By the way, Captain Greeter and a pal of his turned out to be would-be murderers. Well, that's terrible. Certainly, I'll have the marshal go right after that village and place him under arrest. Where are you now? Well, that's what I called you about. I'm in Bankhead trying to get home. I was wondering if you could arrange to put me and a party of three aboard that evening transport plane out of here. Why, I think so. Is there much baggage? I see. It's just two large wooden cases, huh? Well, I'll arrange it. Not at all, my boy. So long. H.P. to Brandon. Come in, Brandon. Brandon. Go ahead, H.P. One of my men will leave transport plane number three at point M54. Pick him up and take him to your headquarters. Got that? Check. Make it good. You were lucky to get transportation like this with such short notice. No trouble at all. This Mr. Brock's a good friend of Dad's and a big shot up here, too. He just about runs things up in this part of the country. Hold it, everybody. Don't anyone turn around. Put your hands behind your heads. Everybody. Hudson, bring me that case you're guarding so carefully. Sounded like a shot, didn't it? Sure did. Better take over. I'll go have a look.
Green, Green, one. 